Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm not too bad, thank you. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Glad to see you. And gotta say, this whole movie is kind of like a really interesting ride. <laughs> is, is You're welcome story? and sorry. I don't <laughs> quite know which one I give. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it is. It's a trip. I mean, here you are, Sandy, and we see you back in the 1960s, which was, I mean, just a great looking time, you know, as far yeah. as stuff and music and all like that. She's one of be singer and just everything around is just as we can say not what it appears to be yeah. right yeah you know I'm I'm pretty proud because I do think it was a complete shot in the dark but our first week of filming a journalist came on set and you know you don't really know the movie that you're making you have an idea you have the movie that you film and then the movie that's created in the edit and you know that's how that kind of works but the journalist was he asked me how would you describe this film and I was exhausted and I just said a very well-directed acid trip. And now having seen the movie, I stand by it. Like, I think, I think that's not inaccurate. So I'm, I'm quite proud of that one. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> that should be on the poster. <laughs> a very well-directed acid trip by Edgar Wright. And there you go. <laughs> there you go. And, and you're, you're right. You know, after seeing this, because of course, you know, we don't want to you know, give anything away at all, because yeah. this is a heck of a ride and a heck of a lot of surprises. But um, yeah, it just, it's just intriguing, because you see this, but then also, it's just kind of interesting to look at how things were in the 60s as compared to today, yeah. as far as when people go out. I mean, true enough, they all dressed a lot better back then, but it was truly a different time, and as the old saying goes, a man's world back then. Well, it's so interesting because one of the most beautiful things about this film for us as performers was, you know, they shut down entire streets of Soho and turned it into the Soho of the 60s, mm -hmm. which for any actor that grew up in London, you spend a lot of time in that particular neck of the woods. So it's quite surreal because you're almost walking past ghosts of yourself. Yeah. Like, oh, I remember when I got that job when I was on that corner and now I'm here and I'm dressed completely differently. But what was really funny about it was we did shoot on the weekends, mm -hmm. which meant Matt and I would walk out in all of our 60s garb ready to go to work. And we'd see our friends coming out of the club or the bar or whatever. They're like, why are you dressed like that? We're like, we're working. <laughs> you guys have a great time. Our day has just begun. Like we'll intersect at six o'clock in the morning more than likely. Right. Like Loved it, loved it, but great music <laughs> as well, you know, in this film. And uh, like you said, it's it's just whole, very, very interesting and intriguing. So people definitely get out, check this movie out last night. It's a ride. <laughs> it sure is, it sure is. And you, thank you so much for your time. Great seeing thank you. you. Lovely to see you too, love. Thomason, how are you? Hello, I'm good, how are you? Good, good to see you. You too. <laughs> and uh, very, intriguing movie I dare say you just start watching it and it just kind of keeps pulling you in more and more I mean especially mm -hmm. your character Eloise thinking I'm just going to move to London go to college everything's gonna be great it didn't really turn out <laughs> good at all no. yes, and, it kind of went downhill from there <laughs> yeah to, to say the least I mean it it is it's one of those where uh, obviously so much stuff going on but you want people to see the movie so mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to, you know, hit on certain things. But one part, though, that I really did enjoy was, of course, your character's love of like 60s music. Mm -hmm. Now, was that something that you already enjoyed or did you just learn about it for the most part uh, when doing this role? I think I have always been the big lover of the Beatles. Um, I've always listened to my dad's music. I mean, how can you not love them? Um, so that they of course, with the, were a band that I was incredibly familiar with, um, but I definitely got a great education on the set of Last Night in Soho because Edgar is so knowledgeable about music from back then and film from back then. Um, so yeah, he just had all of this amazing, an amazing playlist that he had curated to share with me. That's great. And especially, I know Margaret Nolan, uh, this was one of her last roles as well uh, mm -hmm. in the movie, but yeah, she was in A Hard Day's Night with the Beatles. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I watched I watched that in preparation for um for filming last night in Soho. So it was so like it was so crazy like watching these 
amazing classic films and then actually seeing those people working with them in person I was reading a book that Edgar gave me called Ready Steady Go um, all about like the life, life in the 60s and it talked about Diana and Rita and Terence and like I was reading it whilst rehearsing with them and I'm thinking this is just so weird I know I know a lot about these people I'm researching them and their lives but here I, here I am with them in person and they have such incredible stories. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I just, just especially just when you mentioned Diana. Yeah, you know, I watched the movie, of course, with people and I told them, I said, oh yeah, this was her last movie. And I said, I used to watch her as a little boy in the Avengers and there yeah. were first going, oh, she was in the superhero thing. I said, no, 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 completely different. But yeah. I said, you need to check that out because that was really good. Mm -hmm. And then for you, you also had a lot of action that you had to do yourself uh, mm -hmm. in regards to escaping certain situations and stuff like that. Uh, talk a little bit about that too. I mean, just the kind of like stuff that you had to go through just to prepare. Yeah, um, there were, that was, was the first film I'd done like so many stunts like that. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of, a lot of running on concrete streets through Soho. And so I think that's one thing I would have done different is I would have worn proper like running sneakers. <laughs> Uh -huh. and not bands because they were not great on the on the shin splints mm -hmm. um yeah I, yeah it was my first experience of stunts though and I really really enjoyed it because it's incredibly satisfying to learn the choreography for something and to be able in rehearsal to kind of go through the motions go through the beats and then once you're on set to actually be able to pull it off like to hit each beat but also to be able to give the emotion as well it's very satisfying same with the dancing to rehearse for so long and then for on the on the day for it to I don't know just to be able to pull it off it makes you feel really quite um, amazing I've never been like I've always been quite clumsy um, and, and never was like a natural just dancer so um so yeah it was it, I felt really good to be able to kind of achieve those things. Well, fantastic, Thomason. Great job. Uh, like I said, enjoyed it. I look forward to watching it again. And I think <laughs> I did pretty well about keeping a lot of stuff secret. So thank you. Thank you. Hello, Edgar. How are you? Good to see you again. Good to see you as always. Always a pleasure. And uh, I got to tell you, this movie is quite the ride. I mean, you actually had me at the beginning in the opening titles when you pulled up the Scylla Black album. It's like, okay, I know this is really, really going to be good. Uh, tell me a little bit about how did that story, this whole story come about? I guess there's a number of inspirations. I mean, one of them is that, uh, you know, I have an obsession with the 60s through my parents' record collection first. So I was born in 1974. And I think there's something sort of like curious about nostalgia for a decade that you never lived in that feeling that you missed out. And in, in a way, like, I guess maybe this is a sort of becomes a cautionary tale about sort of dreaming about the past too much and, and wishing you were like in a different sort of um, period from your own. Um, and I guess then that was kind of that, that feeling was sort of deepened for me moving to London as a 20 year old and spending a lot of time in Soho, which I have for like 27 years. I mean, I feel in a, both in a good and a bad way, I, I cannot escape <laughs> the area. Like, I mean, I guess at a certain point, the, the honest answer is like, it was the film, the story was haunting me. And the <laughs> only way to exercise it was to make the movie. <laughs> I, I, I can go along with that. I see what you mean, exactly. Cause yeah, I mean, the sixties, I mean, they were just that, you know, great like glamorous time, people dressed up, and, you know, did all types of things. And, and even the, another thing that was really very special for me was when they walked out the door and they're on the marquee at the theater was Thunderball, which is my all time favorite Bond movie. And it's kind of like, Edgar, you were taking my dreams too, weren't you? I know, I, did you not notice that? I've been kind of like, a, it's like I've been in your thoughts. I've just been stealing sort of like your, your memories, like your <laughs> Like event, eventually, they if they won't even be in theaters. They'll just come straight to your brain in like twenty years' time. <laughs> That's the next movie. There you go. <laughs> we just created the next one. Fabulous. <laughs> but like you said, just so much stuff. And I, I've been telling people they keep saying, "Well, what's it about?" I said, "Go see it," because you don't want to spoil, you know, anything for anybody. But it is just quite the ride. And also, I have to ask: uh, This was Diana Riggs' last movie. Talk a little bit about having her in the film. I mean. I you know, 
I guess it's, you know, like one of my proudest, like sort of moments of my career is working with her, but not just working with her on the movie. And obviously she's just fantastic in the film and what an absolute treat. Um, and, you know, she just was just a joy to work with, but also getting to know her and, you know, long after the movie, like sort of right through the lockdown and even in her kind of like last weeks, you know, like I was talking to her and, and, and actually, you know, she did a little bit of stuff on the movie just before she passed away. And the crazy thing is, is that even though I, you know, she was ill, like my last memory of being with her is a happy one because she's so funny and fierce. And, and so she kind of had me laughing. So like my memory, like of walking away the last time I saw her was of smiling because she just made me like, sort of just, just a joy to be with. So I, I have to just like look at it of how grateful am I to have known her at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree with you. Fantastic. Uh, enjoyed it very much. And don't forget, yeah, when we do our movie, yeah, let me know. And I've been watching The Avengers all morning just to get ready. Too. Ah, so <laughs> and appeal forever. You got it. You got it. Edgar, thank you as always and take care. Thank you.